Hi there, my name's Andy Young and I'm one of the automotive lecturers down at Unitech in Auckland, New Zealand and welcome to my YouTube Andy Mechanic channel. Now, a bit different for most uh, mechanics but on this particular video I'm going to be uh, rebuilding a wheel with new spokes and it just turns out on Facebook that I found out this morning that exactly a year ago to this day I rebuilt the rear wheel for the same motorcycle. Now the bike in question is on the hoist and that is Yamaha's infamous TDR250. It's a parallel twin two-stroke engine with YPVS and it is the first production supermoto bike and they are phenomenally good and I used to have one when I was 17 years old and I managed to convince my son Benjamin that when came up, one came up on Trade Me we had to buy it immediately, which we did. I think it was on trade me for about five minutes. We bought it outright, went to Wellington to go pick it up. And it's been a fantastic motorcycle with Ben until the day he blew it up. So yes, the engine is currently in bits, hence all the black uh, wrap around the engine. It's been in bits for how long, Benjamin? Well, no, because I did the rear wheel a year ago, so it must have been in bits for a good nine months. Absolute sacrilege. And what happened was the uh, one of the pistons clipped one of the power valves, and that shouldn't happen in one of those bikes. And it caused the back wheel to lock up. And then what happened, Benjamin? Threw me into a ditch. He fell off. On the driveway at home at the old house at Puhoi, but no, he didn't hurt himself, but it didn't do the bike any good. Um, so Ben has now ordered eventually all the parts from around the world because it's quite an old bike and they do blow up quite often, so, which means parts are quite hard to come by. So we've got all the parts to rebuild the engine, and that's going to be a few more videos down the line. But today, I need to rebuild or respoke the front wheel. I'm going to show you how to do it. Now, this is something which I learnt when I was when I trained to be qualified Shimano bicycle mechanic a few years ago when I first came to New Zealand. Prior to that I'd never laced a wheel before. Um, and I don't do it that often and it's something which if you don't do that often you've got to do it step by step. The pros they can pull out all the old spokes at once and they just lace up the new wheel and a friend of mine Ian who now lives back in Scotland, hi Ian, he is extremely good at rebuilding wheels. Makes me look like a complete moron to be honest. Um, but no, the technique that I use is one spoke at a time. Take the old one out, fit the new one in, and that way you're guaranteed to keep the lacing pattern and you also are going to keep uh, the correct overlap of the spokes as well. Now, changing the spokes is one thing. Truing the wheel to make sure that the rim runs true, and parallel, and doesn't have any lift, doesn't have any side to side, that's a completely different ball game. And again, yes, I can do that that's going to be on the second video for this particular wheel. So this video is going to cover relacing the rim uh, and the second video uh, will cover how to true a spoked wheel. Okay well let's make a start and the first job is to take off the tyre. Right. Right. Well to get the tyre off we've got to de first of all deflate the tube. To do that we take the core out of the valve. A bit damaged, right? Oh well. I think you've oh, your valve squashed, Ben. On your oh, tube, no. you've killed it. Okay, and then we undo this lock nut here. Look, get rid of that. Well, that still threads off. All right, cool. Okay, to the time machine. So we're going to break the bead first. Yeah, that's 
side done. And the one bit you can't do is where the valve is, otherwise you'll tear the tube. Have a bit of lube. So rotate the wheel around until the valve is just past the heel. This is assuming, of course, you've got your own time machine. There we go. Okay. Now this is a tubed type um, tire, so there's a tube inside. So we use the curled end of the tire iron, not the flat end. Hopefully, hopefully we're not going to pinch the tube. Now, as you pull the tire iron over, make sure that the rest of the tire is in the well of the rim. That'll make life a lot easier, otherwise you'll be fighting the tire. There we go. Never allow the valve to go past the heel, again otherwise you can damage the valve. And then you can take the tube out. Easy. All that's left now is to get the other side of the tube. Sorry, then. Get the side of the tire off. Now, now that the tube's out of the way, it doesn't matter which end we use with the tire iron. And I find that end a lot easier for this bit. That tire junk. Ben's worn it out. So I'll chuck that outside. Okay, we can head back to the bench now. Okay, so we've got the bare wheel now. We've taken the tyre off and the next job is to remove that old rim tape. Hmm, screwdriver, I think. This is a really old rim tape. Probably the original. And that's saying something. It's gone really hard. Jeez. Really, really hard. Okay, I think we'll just cut that. a nice new one when we put the tire on. There we go. Yes. Good thick one though. There it was. Nah, it's too brittle. Get rid of that. Okay, now by having the rim tape off it now exposes all the nipples of the spokes. So what I like to do first of all is crack all of those off and make sure that we can actually undo them and then one by one we're going to be fitting 
some nice new spokes. Now these spokes might be a different length, I've got to sort through them yet. You get in the spoke kit all new spokes and all new nipples. Now, if you're buying these off eBay or Amazon or wherever it is you're getting them from, be sure not to not to buy Chinese spokes. Um, crap, to be honest. We used to have a really big problem in the bicycle industry, um, and nearly all the wheels are built in China, unfortunately, but they, they suffer from what we call spoke rot. Um, so you're a lot better off making sure you're getting a good quality Japanese spoke to replace the ones that you, you're putting in. Otherwise, they won't last anywhere near as long. I mean, don't forget, these spokes, that's a 1988 bike. Golly, so how old was that? 1988, 98, 2008. Jeez. It's pretty old. It's nearly 30 years old. It's 28 years old. 28 year old spokes in this wheel. I guarantee if you buy Chinese spokes, they're going to last three or four years. Yes, Ch Japanese ones are slightly more expensive, but hey, just do it once, do it right. It's going to be a motto, isn't it, I think? Do it once, do it right. <laughs> okay, so we'll sort through those later on. Hopefully, there's enough. And the first job, like I said, is to crack off all these spokes. Now, I did actually buy, before I even knew I had this job to do, how cool is that? I actually bought one of these. Now, this is a spoke spanner, and it comes with all these different attachments for different sizes. So, fingers crossed, there's going to be the right one in there to fit these spokes. And I bought that about a month ago, and I had no idea I had this job to do. I totally forgot about it. So yeah, new tool to play with. Okay, so first job, oh, we've got to wait there. Let's pull that off. Don't need that anymore. Old school type as well. a bit of spray around each of these. Okay, so now we can start to undo these. Now, um, just like with any bolt, it's anti-clockwise to undo. And we just want to crack them all off for now to make sure we can actually undo them. So that's one. There we go. So I'm going to work my way around all of these, cracking them off now. I get to one that's a troublesome one, and I mean, there's nothing to stop us cutting it out if we need to, because these are all scrap anyway. Right? But, um, yeah, doing it the right way. Should have made this with a blank because it digs into your hand. Maybe I should just take that one off. Job for the lathe, okay. A little bit less leverage now, though. There we go. It's important to get a good spoke spanner because. These things can be pretty tight, and if you can get, you know, a normal spanner is nowhere near the same width as that, so far more likely to chew up. But 
it's best to reverse now rather than try and crack them off as, you, as you're fitting the new spokes because you want that, that operation to be as easy as possible so you don't get uh, distracted from what you're doing. And rebuilding wheels, it's not a five minute job, you know, it takes time and it takes a lot of patience. And a lot of people, obviously, because of that, just can't be bothered. I'm not going to, a motorcycle shop or a bicycle shop to do it. But it's not that hard. And it's a sign of Yamaha quality that these spokes, after 28 years, are actually, are actually undoing, which is pretty amazing, to be honest. Very impressed. Now, if you're bothered about your rim condition and stuff, do all this on a piece of cardboard. Once I've cracked all these off, I'll be putting it in the stand, I have a truing stand, to actually replace the spokes one by one, so the wheel will be in the vertical orientation. And it actually doesn't wobble around as much then, which is a lot easier. When you're riving around like this, you can't have it in the train stand because it just jumps around too much. Being able to rebuild wheels and true wheels is actually a really good skill that not that many people have. So if it's something that uh, you need to do, give it a go yourself. There's not, you can't lose anything by giving it a try. If it all fails, you can still take it down to your local motorcycle dealer and their mechanic will finish it off for you. Probably a good idea to take a few photos before you start, and then you can see how the sp how the spokes are laced up. Basically, what goes where. Because once you've taken all the spokes out, it ain't going to work. And there are different uh, different patterns that manufacturers use, especially the bicycle industry. Man, there's so many different ways of lacing up a wheel in the bike industry, it's crazy. So just observe what you've got and copy it. It does get your hand, does that? What a neat little tool. And yes, I did pay for it. This is not given to me for free, you know? Things like that don't often happen. Okay, but uh, really useful. Really, really useful and, um, you know, worth the 20 bucks to buy it. You know, what else have we got? I mean, I've got some old ones in here. I mean, that, 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 this is the kind of stuff that I used to use. Which is, well, that one's broken anyway. And then you've got this, this one that comes free with the Yamaha bike. That one there, look. And I think, actually, one day I even made one. Because I didn't have one. But now I've got, you know, one tool that does pretty much every size now. So really chuffed with that. Nice and light, easy to use. A little bit longer would have been nice, um, especially for undoing the really bad ones. But I can make an extension that's going to screw into there and give me a nice little handle to fit in my hand. Job for the lathe. I'll do that next week. Okay, so we've got the wheel, and you can hear that? Everything's sort of loose now, and well, yeah, the hub's sort of a bit, a bit loose. So we can stick it in the truing stand and uh, start to remove. I'll replace the spokes. Here we go. Now, before you actually start to pull spokes out of the old wheel, it's important that you sort through the new spokes that you've bought because there's chances are there's going to be different ones in that packet, uh, different lengths sometimes, and they also have different heads. Now, I'll show you one of each of these. This particular pack's got two different types, and we've got a spoke with a 90 head on it, a just just under 90 degrees. We've got another one here. Da, 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 da. There you go, look. which is just before 90 degrees, and these go in different positions on the rim. And it's very important that you don't mix them up. And you also need to remove all your nipples, so a big pile of nipples. Perfect. Okay, so we'll make a start, and I'll be taking one spoke out at a time. And the first two or three are going to be a bit weird because I'm just sort of weighing up which is the easiest one to remove first, and then the next one to remove. Once you get into it, you get into like a rhythm, and it's really easy. And I always work from one side of the wheel first, and do all that side, and then work on the other side of the wheel. Okay, here we go. 
Right, so let's start at the valve. Gives us a point of reference, doesn't it? And we'll get rid of that uh, wheel weight while we're on. Another wheel weight. How many wheel weights does he need? There we go. Right. So we're going to work on this side of the rim first, and the first spoke to remove. Let's take this one out. That should work. Okay. And looking at this one, this is one of the spokes that has the lesser run angle. Okay. So how easy is that going to be to get out? Right. Old nipple and Mr. Spokey. Come out. There we go. Now, can we get that one out? No. Not very well. If we can't get that one out, we can't get the new one in. So we'll leave that back in there. Get it in. There we go. Right. Let's try the other one then first. Let's do that one. Now, now that these are all loosened off and oiled up and everything, you can just use, use a star screwdriver, a posi screwdriver, actually on the nipple itself to make life a lot easier. And a lot of the professional wheel builders use uh, electric drills, actually rechargeable drills for this kind of stuff, spinning them in and out. So obviously they're making loads of these wheels every day, so... Because there's still a lot of hand-built wheels out there for competition work and stuff. Right, another nipple out. Okay, and that's the next one around on the rim. If we undo that, yes, we can get that out. Okay, so that is a 90 spoke. Right, so we'll do that one every second. It's a 90 spoke. Now, there's a new 90 spoke, 90 degree spoke at the top, and we're going to use a thread lock on the actual threads. Now, yes, there is a reasonable period of time when I fit the last, or fit the first spoke to when I'm actually going to be truing the wheel, but I can still move this stuff. Uh, the last thing you want to do is put anything like copper, copper slip on there or grease because you don't want these spokes working loose whilst you're riding down the road. That would be pretty bad. Okay, so we'll replace that one, stick that through, and that one, if you look around the rim, Count four. One, two, three, four. It goes around like that, crosses over this spoke, and goes through that hole there. Look. There we go. So if you, if you get a bit lost, just look around for the equivalent spoke. And it's always four away. So one, two, three, four. That spoke there is the equivalent to this spoke here. You count backwards. One, two, three, four. There's another one. Right. So we'll leave that in there like that. We know where it's going to go, and we'll get this other one, and we'll ping that out of the rim. They're really tight sometimes. And we've got to, got to give them a bit of a bend. Oh, should I say it? Flex, there we go. I'm just going to free that one off, which is on the other side of the rim. Should now be able to. There we go. Right, let's do that one now. So that has a few out. We'll just mark that one. That's another 90. So we'll get another 90. Put a bit of thread lock on it. There we go. Only a little tiny drop. That's all we need. Now there's also a pattern where these things alternate. You know, you got your head goes in from the back, goes in from the front. So that one's going to go in from there. Right. Now, I have a sneaky suspicion we're going to have to work in a set area rather than do one side to the other like I normally do. So now that this one's free, this one obviously came out of there. That's the last one. So we can remove that. And that one goes in from the outside. That is... 
one of these. So I'll put some put some thread lock on there. And hopefully we can get it back to where it's supposed to be now. Without I'm doing anymore. Okay, so it's gotta go in that hole there. So we're very restrictive as to Okay, so that's we're gonna have to slacken that one off again. Jeez, okay. Well, that's just part of the job. that one into the airlock. I've still got one more to do because they're in sets of four. Okay, that's three done, and I want to do this one next, so let's get rid of that. Now this one looks easy. Okay, right, let's get rid of those. And you do often have to flex them a little bit to get them in and out. So that one there is a 90. So we've got a 90, bit of thread lock on it. Do like that. There you go. It's better. Useless. Not there. Professional wheel builders will be laughing their heads off at the moment. This is just how I do it. And it does work. Yes, it does take a while. Right. Okay, so we've done two pairs, both sides of the rim. And all we need to do now is replicate that again at this point, and then at this point, and then at this point, and 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 this point. And then we can go to the pub for a pint. No, we have a wheel to true. Okay, that's right. Okay, so we'll do the same again now. Um, I think we've got enough confidence to remove these four spokes in one go, and then we could just copy the way that they're laced on the previous one. Let's do that. That might make life a lot easier now that we know how things go. And the fact we can't replace one spoke at a time on this particular rim. When I did the rear wheel, yes you could. It's quite easy to do that. But on this one, no. I think the important thing to remember is which ones are the 90 degree ones, which ones are the ones that are a bit, bit more of an angle. So I've come up with a cunning plan for that. A cunning plan, Baldrick. The 
Okay. So we will use yellow for that one, which is slightly more than 90, and we'll use white to mark the nice degree one. Easy. Color coded, nice and simple. Okay, so what have we got first? Let's take this one out. This is an easy one to get out. And that one is a 90. So 90s are white. So we'll just put a little tiny bit of white on the rim there, look. You can't see it there, can you? A little mark of white there, Better won't mind. And then we can take that out. And we can tell it goes in from the back uh, and the, the spoke runs there because you'll see the mark on the rim. Okay, so what else have we got? What else have we undone? Okay, we've we'll undone that one, this outer one here, so we'll undo that, Let's get rid of that. There we go. And that one is also, yes, a 90. So we'll put some white on that one as well. There we go. And next is this one here. Yeah, and we're going to do that one as well. There we go. Right. And these are the first two we've got to put in. So it's last out, first in. Okay, now that one and the other one. Yes, they're both the other ones. We'll mark those on the rim. A bit of yellow and a bit of yellow. Okay, let's check that first. Right, so yellow one, dum dum dum. Bit of thread lock. Just a little tiny bit. The outside going in, that's more like it. There we go, look. And it goes outside in. It goes up there. Look. Okay, that goes onto that one there. Cool. Now, with that out of the way, we can replace that. So that's a yellow, and it goes in from the outside. Right, in from the outside. Bit of thread lock. Go and it goes there. Stick that nickel on there. Tighten them all up later. Okay, so next is this one, and this one goes into that hole there because its buddy is that one, and there's four distance one, two, three, four again. So there we go, that definitely goes into there. And the other two should be whites white one and the whites go in from the back so in from like that around like that and that one goes in there and you can see the mark on the rim just to check its body is back here and again it's four back one two three four you see there's method to the madness now we're gonna have to do them in batches of four on this particular rim Last one, another white, and that's here. That goes in from the back, it comes around, it goes over the top of that spoke, just like that one did the outer spokes, and it goes into there. We need some more thread lock, just a little drop, and another nipple. 
And now we can do all of these up. Just figure tight. And the last one. And we can start the next batch. Cool. Okay, so we've done two sets of four now. We're going to move around and do this set next. So we can just remove all of those. Do the ounces first. That's these ones. Get those out of the way. What a lot of patience for this kind of thing. It usually takes me about an hour to an hour and a half to rebuild the wheel. And then, well, true it's a bit longer again. Okay, so that one is a 90. The 90s are white. I'll leave those off for a second. Okay, get rid of that. The other one, the other out is that one there. Get rid of that. One is also a 90, so that's white. And we get rid of that. And now we've got the two inner spokes. Not a very nice day today. It's raining again. Okay, so we can get rid of those two. And they need to just be flexed a little bit. Out of the hole. Cut them off first. There we go. That's that one out. And now this one. Cool. Okay, now these are yellows, so I'll put a bit of yellow on there, and a bit of yellow on there. Right, get rid of that, and get rid of that. Right, yellows. So last, it, last out first in, yellow, put it down. And this is yellow. One, two, three, four. Goes in that one there. And the thread lock. There we go. And the nipple. Right, another one. Oh, hang on, let's be on. Just leave that off for a second, do It's a learning curve. 
Maybe we'll have to add the other one through first. Remember? So the other yellow is that one there. It goes in. And this one, there's his friend. Next one round. So one, two, three, four. Goes in that hole there, look. So a bit of thread lock. Get a nipple. When you do it in batches of four, it's actually, it's not difficult. You've just got to keep your eye open and see what you've done before. And if you think you've made a mistake, that's the time to stop and try and put it right. Don't keep going, because trying to rectify a mistake further down the line, you know, a lot harder and a lot more time consuming. Okay, so for this one, there's his buddy. One, two, three, four, goes in there. Oh, it's all coming back to me now. It's been a while. And we just had a delivery today. All the parts have just arrived for the engine rebuild on this bike, so Ben is very keen for me to finish rebuilding it. Okay, now we've got a white, which is a 90. That goes in from the back and it comes down. You can see the mark on there, the telltale. That's obviously going to go up over there into that one. But to double check, there's his buddy. Okay, matching one. There's the buddy. And you count four back. One, two, three, four. There we go. Right, a little bit of thread lock. And another bit. Very therapeutic. Okay. And we've got one more white to do, which is on this side. So it goes in from the back, thread it through, and that has to go in that one there. There we go. Just to check, there's his buddy. We count four back. One, two, three, four. Perfect. Mr. Young, it almost looks like you know what you're doing there. I just don't build enough of these on a regular basis to be able to do it with ultimate confidence. But as mechanics, do our best. And I'm sure this video will help some people to come to terms with how to rebuild a wheel. Um, you know, we're, all, we're not all brilliant at everything, that's the thing to bear in mind. Okay, so that's that pair, that's that four done. I'll just give that a bit more of a tweak. Okay, that's the two pairs finished. So we've now done three, three lots. So we've now got one, two, three, four, five, six more lots to go. So after this lot, we'll get halfway around. And I'm quite sure that you'll be getting bored by now, so there's going to be lots and lots of editing going on with this, uh, with this video. But we'll now undo these four, this next batch. Get all those out of the way, and we'll mark them up with the colours again, because I don't want to go wrong. Colours are good. Keep it simple. You know? Make it as easy as you possibly can. what it's all about. Ben's missing all the fun, you know. I'm sure he'll be inside playing his PlayStation. Look at these toys out here that you couldn't be playing with. Look at this little PlayStation. When I was a lad, one of that batch before. Okay. 
There we go. Okay, so we're going to pull the outers out again first. So we've got an outer here, so we'll get rid of that one. And again, that's a 90. So a 90 is a white. A splodge on there. Splodge is splodge. White is good. Okay, and then the other outer is that one there. So we'll get rid of that. That should also be a 90. Which it is. Another white splodge. Inners to get rid of, so that's that one there. Let's get that out the, out of the hole, and that one there. Get that out of the hole. Okay, just tighten that one up. Do it just until it's sort of finger tight, really. And we'll loop. Okay, and the next one, this is the other inner. Uh, there's his buddy, just here, look. So one, two, three, four. That goes in there. So a bit of thread lock to go on. There we go. And that can go through, so yeah, so one, two, three, four. Hang on, where's his buddy? Buddy's there, look, one, two, three, four, that goes in there. Excellent stuff. Okay, so that's the two inners done. We can now do the two outers. And again, just do it up to the finger tight for now. Cool. Okay, so we've done the two yellows, which are the inners. We can now do the two white outers. We've got one, where's he gone? There he is, that one there, look. Now that's one of the 90 degree spokes. So that's going to go in from the back. See where they look like that. And there's his buddy. There, look. So you count back four. One, two, three, four. That goes in that hole there, look. That's a bit of, bit of thread lock. Not too much, just a little drop. And then that nipple can go on there. One nipple, there we go. Screwdriver. Tighten that up. Okay, so hungry now. Right. Okay, so we've got one more white, which is a 90 to go. And we thread that through from this side through there. And then now, his buddy is this one here, so we get to the rim and then count four. One, two, three, four. And that tallies, it's the last one left, so it's a good double check. Bit of thread lock. Cool. Get a nipple. Pop that on there. Cool. Only eight sparks to go! Whoop whoop! Cool. So next batch of four, and take off the old nipples. Okay, so we can install the last four now. So we've got the yellow marks. Now that's the, um, the inner spokes, so we can put those in. There's one. And 
the last one of those to go in is that one there. And we've got to cross them over. There we go. Now this one, there's his buddy. Comes down to here. So one, two, three, four. That goes into there. So a bit of thread lock required. And a nipple. Screw that in there. Screwdriver. Dum, 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 dum. So close to sandwich time. Nom nom nom. And again, just finger tight for now, we're not going mad. Okay, and the other one, which is this one here, there's his buddy coming down, so one, two, three, four, that goes into there. I find it so much easier doing this with the wheel in the stand as well, rather than just doing it on the bench. If you haven't got a stand, then even a bolt in the vise, or use your wheel spindle sticking in the vise uh, vertically, will just help. But uh, having the wheel vertical makes a big difference because you can get in either side really easily. Whereas if you're working with the wheel in the horizontal plane, then getting underneath is a bit of a pain and the vice gets in the way and stuff. So you can even make one of these stands, they're not, you know, it's kind of a box section, not hard. Okay, now the outers. So the outer spokes, they come in from the inside. And that one. Well, there's his buddy coming down, so let's count four. One, two, three, four. That goes into there, look. Oh, it sounds like Ben's coming. Better get it finished quick. Otherwise I'll be in trouble. one for this side that comes in from the inside and then of course it should be going into that hole there but we'll just double check there's his buddy coming down count four one two three four stick that in there then. I do believe somebody's here the trespasser is on it on the estate. It's alright because my mic's dealing with it. There we go. Okay, so hopefully that wasn't too long a video for you. Uh, it was tedious doing wheels. You've got to have a lot of patience and just take your time and you can't rush it. Otherwise you tend to make mistakes. Um, don't forget, you're going to need some thread lock. This stuff is Loctite 263. You're going to need some of that. Uh, to go on the threads of each of the spokes. It acts as a lubricant as you tighten them up, then when it sets, it stops the spokes from being done. Uh, I also find, whenever I'm doing it, really useful to use a couple of marker pens. Um, just little dots on the hub, just to tell you which spoke goes in which hole. Because once you get out of sync, once you make a mistake, it's actually really confusing getting back on track again. Uh, and really, only the professionals will pull out all the spokes at once, the old spokes, and then lace the wheel from scratch. I have done it a couple of times. Uh, I remember building up a wheel for a, I think it was a front wheel for one of the Yamaha YZ250s. A hub turned up, a rim turned up, and a bag of spokes. And man, it took me ages to get my head around it. But I did, I did it in the end, but um, nah, why make life hard for yourself? In, in this particular, on this particular rim, to do uh, a batch of four spokes at once worked out the best way. and. You know, it's different for every wheel. They're all they're all laced up differently, different spoke lengths. Sometimes you can get the spokes out. Sometimes you can't. You've got to remove another one. Um, it's just the way it is. So take your time, plan ahead, and maybe even take a couple of photos before you start, and then you've got an idea of what the spoke pattern should be for your wheel. Um, having one of these DRC spoke um, nickel spanners really really useful. Um, that's the first time I've used that. And you know, to just use a normal span is almost impossible. This one's a 5.6 millimeter. You can't get those kind of spanners. So, 20 bucks, you get a full set, really cool. Um, would just prefer a little bit of a knurled kind of 
handle or a, or a nice round knob to screw on the end just so it's not digging into your palm when you're undoing the real tight ones. Uh, DRC improvements, therefore a bit of customer feedback for you. And uh, of course you're going to need a posi screwdriver as well. So all in all, not a bad job at all. Um, the next video will be me truing up that wheel and getting it so that it's nice and straight in the horizontal plane and it doesn't, it doesn't have any bounce to it. It's nice and flat in the vertical plane too. Uh, and that will be the next video. So I hope you found that video helpful. Uh, I will be editing lots and lots of it so it's just nicely condensed and it also makes me look really professional, which is unlikely on this particular job. Um, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down the bottom and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, then please do and you'll receive free notifications. There's no charge. Free notifications as to when any new videos go up on the channel and there's usually four or five every single week. And uh, well, my name's Andy Young. Thank you for watching one of my Andy Mechanic YouTube videos. Okay, cheers for now. Over and out.